Hey Legionnaires and welcome back here with some more Napoleonic action for you today as we return with the NTW3 mod for Napoleon Total War and we are here with the historical battle of Kuln which is uh, fought in 1813 between the French of course and the Austrians, the Prussians and the Russians. It is a huge battle and it's one of the battles that builds up towards the Battle of Leipzig which we have recently covered and uh, yeah this is actually a rare coalition victory. Uh, at this point, it's kind of a rare thing to see, but we actually have just had some French cab being routed here. Some Chester Cheval and some Chevalier is routed by a big, looks like a big Dragoon unit. No, a big Lancer unit. It's a huge unit. Um, but yeah, so, while they're interrupting my intro, yes, the Battle of Kulm uh, was fought by... Uh, Van Damme, Marmont, and saint uh marshal. Well, I think uh, two of them are marshals. I don't think Van Damme was a marshal. Uh, against uh, Schwarzenberg, uh, Von Cleese, Barclay de Tolly, and uh, Tolstoy and Wittgenstein of uh, Russia as well. Um, so, yeah, it is a huge, huge battle. It lasts over two days. Uh, fairly even numbers. Well, on the first day, I mean, the French did slightly outnumber. As you can see, we have more uh, Austrians being routed. We've got Austrians being routed here coming into the village. Uh, which I guess is Colm. Actually, no, Colm is a little bit further back. But yeah, look at this visceral legion here just stopping this Austrian advance. Um, but yeah, there's about 34,000 uh, French against 16,000 uh, allies. And then that inflates on the second day to 60 to 100,000 allies. It is a really, really overwhelming victory uh, for the uh, for the French. Uh, for, the, for the allies, sorry, against the French. Um, but yeah, this is a, like, part, this like battle is part of what is called the Trachtenberg uh, plan, which is like where you f where the Allies kind of basically decided we're gonna fight the French where Napoleon isn't. So at this battle, as I've already listed off all the French commanders, you can tell that Napoleon was not in that list. Napoleon is not at this battle. Um, it is actually, like I said, part of the Trachtenberg plan uh, to basically just isolate the French armies where Napoleon isn't, because Napoleon just was able to beat any Allied commander, but his uh, marshals weren't as good as him, obviously. Um, so yeah, anyway, history lesson over, let's get on with the battle, and uh, if you're enjoying seeing NTW3 historical battles, then do remember to leave a like, subscribe if you're around here as well, and feel free to leave a comment to your support. If you've got any sort of Napoleonic battles that you want to see recreated, let me know in the comments, but yeah, let's get straight into this. So we have two Russian center armies, I believe, we have one here, there is one over there, actually there are three Russian center armies, um, one is led by Ney, one is led by Murat, and one is led by... Uh, Berhane. I think this one might be led by Nora. Yeah. So Eugene is over there. You've got Ney in the back. And then you have uh, Mura here. And then you have a Russian South over here. Who I'm not sure who this actually is led by. But uh, yeah, this Russian South Army here is pushing really wide of this Austrian army right now. Ney is kind of watching in the back lines. He's actually got a... Uh, he's actually surrounded. Well, the French are actually surrounded at Kulm here. There is another Russian army coming uh, this direction. And... Uh, the main French armies are facing uh, Russians and Prussians over there, uh, Prussians and Austrians over there, and then you've got uh, Eugene here who's facing another Russian army. So they are kind of surrounded of the uh, French in this battle, which is uh, kind of how we went in history. Uh, but we've got a big carry fight going on here by the looks of it. Look at this. We've got Dragoons going in, but Russia's south taking on the Austrians, and then we're about to have some uh, Chevalegas going here against some uh, against Dragoons as well by the looks of it. So there you go, in they go. Lots of Allied troops in this battle. There are a lot of French, but there are also a lot of Allied troops. There's plenty of German troops because the Germans are still loyal to France at this point. And most of the German factions. You've got a lot of Italians here, and we also have a lot of Poles. Um, so yeah, very, very multicultural army. We actually have some Polish grenadiers just sat here. Um, but yeah, there you go. Those uh, Dragoons have been routed. It looks like the Austrians have also been routed. But uh, So there you go. You've got Ogru, who is... Uh, uh, commanding the Russian South Army over here, but there you go. He's really much in trouble. They they could take him out very much next. Like they could rush straight on. There's a big gap in the line here, and this Russian South Army is in trouble. It's actually kind of small, to be fair. There is more cab on the way up. There's the Sars back here. And we've got a six pounder, but uh, that's not going to stop stop the Russian this uh, this cab. And look at this. You're going to have to see like some line infantry sacrifice themselves, to save their general. Big risk here, but it kind of kind of worked. You know, they need to get maybe more infantry in them. Maybe put a, a volley into this cavalry. But uh, yeah, they need more cavalry on this flank here. You can see that uh, Murar looks like he's going to shift some. Uh, some dragoons across he needs to. He needs to like, kind of fit, put a gap in this line, or fill this gap in the line. So yeah, that was a, a very close call there for Russia South. Really, really close call. 
But uh, it looks like we're seeing some sort of engaging from the Allies and other fronts as well. But this seems like where the main line is going on. Prussia really dueling right now with uh, the French lines here. We've got conscripts of the guard. We've got all sorts of various Italian uh, troops here, which are fine for Mura. We've got lots of uh, Chevaliers here. And uh, yeah, over here we have uh, more conscripts of the guard, actually. There's a lot of Italians in this battle. Lots of Poles as well. They're facing a whole bunch of Russians, which is coming down the road just now. So we've got, I imagine, Laguerre? Not Laguerre. Um, like, they're like light infantry, like Laguerre yeah, yeah, or something like that, how they say it. I don't know. Words are hard, it would seem. But we've got lots of cavalry back here. Grenadier Cheval. This is Ledoux's unit. Oh my gosh, they brought some good cavs. Uh, like, lots lots of cav here being brought up. And it looks like we're seeing uh, artillery just shelling this poor Russian cav here. Fair enough. But we will go back to the main front line over there with the Prussians and the Austrians. And we'll keep an eye on this. I'll keep an eye on the map to make sure that uh, no other combats have gone in the way. But yeah, Prussia right now is the one dueling. With the, uh, with the French right now. They've got lots of musketeers, lots of land bear up here. Land bear, not the yet most accurate, but he's, uh, there's a lot of them. A scary big unit. Is it, yes, if you want to enjoy, uh, if, if you want to get involved in some NTW3 action, if you enjoy it and you want to get involved in it, then uh, the link for my Discord is down below in the description. It's the best place to get some NTW3 uh, like either send in your NTW3 replays or to uh, to take part in some battles. But there we got a little bit of a charge. We've got some uh, looks like some an artillery that's been broken. There you go. That is not good. Uh, they have routed the uh, the Russian cab, but they lost our, their artillery in doing so. Did the French? And they have no artillery on this side. They got cuirassiers here as well. These guys could get shelled. They're Westphalian cuirassiers. Kind of cool. But uh, yeah, no gun now, so uh, that was like an 8-pounder as well, as a useful artillery piece. They're going to probably have to push Russia, who's setting up his artillery. Oh, this is, <laughs> this is not his artillery. This is actually the French artillery that broke. This is like their gun carriage. <laughs> well, why that's running towards Russian lines? Maybe that says something about the French army at this point. They're, they're just not interested in uh, fighting for Napoleon anymore. But there's plenty of like French cavalry out here looking for uh, like Russian armies by the looks of it. Yeah, that's not good. That was not a, a good start there for the French on that flank. We've got, like, the Lancer Rouges here. This is a guard cavalry unit, if I remember correctly. And it's going to charge these Prussian cav here. Good idea. Hit this. I think this is, a like, a win for the French. This is a really strong Lancer unit. Oh, I say that. Losing slightly. Morale went down very quickly. Sending in some uh, Chevrolets as well. They are turning it around. And the Lancer Rouges... The morale is certainly shifting. We've got some like Dragoons here, or some Cuirassiers by the looks of it, maybe. For Prussia. And they're going to send them in as well. Prussia may lose this cavalry fight. This is 2v1. I don't know. These Lancer Rouges aren't as good as I thought they are. Maybe they're not as great with the, like, when they're in this unit, but they got absolutely annihilated. Both those cavalry units did well them there to the, uh, I think these are pure Prussian Cuirassiers by the looks of their uh, like helmets. They're a really good unit there. Did very well. Looks like Austria is kind of shifting his fo focus entirely on this small Russian army here, which is getting itself surrounded, I feel. Uh, this small uh, French army. I called it Russian there because it's Russia South. <laughs> but yeah, this is getting. It, this full, small French force here getting itself surrounded. It is isolated. Um, this is not what like the, the French needed right now. Not at all. And we've actually got uh, a gun that's been broken here. This has been broken by, uh, like, it's like a Prussian missile or something like that, maybe? But yeah, this Vistula Legion couldn't protect in time. And uh, French are losing very few assets right now. We've got more Vistula Legion coming to this side. And this is a good, good sign. So these guys, I mean, we've got these like guard here as well. Some good units here for the French. These are like some German allied, like, guard units. Some good units. And over on the other side, we can now see... Uh, the emerging Russian horde is starting to arrive. It's starting to put pressure on Nate's flank over here. He's got like trilliers over here. He's got like guard units in this in this core here. So these guys should do pretty well. I'm expecting great stuff from you, uh, from you friends. We've got like Italian line infantry as well. I don't think they're going to be as doing as great, but uh, I imagine this is just made of like musketeers. Yeah, lots of musketeers. They should do okay. 
And here we go, big cavalry charge over here. Russia and France sharing uh, the joy as they are on the other flank, and they are doing a lot of damage here. Uh, looks like we've got goons routing all sorts of stuff here. Polish lancers doing very, very well. Routing all sorts of dragoons, and now we've got like some Cossacks coming in. Don't think they're going to be stopping the uh, the French horde. We've got the Ladoux Corps, like uh, Ladoux Grenadier Cheval here. You can see all of the Russians starting to appear out of nowhere. And France, just like that, is routing a lot of the Russian cavalry. This is going to do really well for the uh, for this flank over here. Maybe they will have some success. I mean, some of these Russians should return. They're looking fairly healthy, but we will see. Looks like Ney has got a very nice setup really around this uh, around this building. What's he got in this building? Sappers, Italian sappers, yeah. He's set really. Uh, over here looks as well that Russia is starting to appear out of the forest. And we already have the uh, the line infantry here of Poland starting to get engaged. Poland and France anyway, they've got a bit of a mix. I'm, if I'm Russia, I'm focusing down these Polish units. You've got to just route these guys and then you make holes in the line. But good volleys here from France. They are using the 1812 uh, like cause because there is no 1813 like French cause, unfortunately. But uh, hopefully there will be eventually at one point. Yeah, French, is, French is here getting a pretty nice flank. I don't think the Russians are this far. There's a lot of French infantry here. Like that is a lot. I think like the they may have the uh, like have the uh, the flank on the Russians there. But look at this Prussian cabin behind. This is a real danger. I mean, we've got some uh, gendarmes there, elite. Uh, little, motol, little motals. Here. <laughs> Me trying to do my French accent there. And they're going in anyway. They, they may be able to beat this unit. They are pretty damn elite. Apparently, it says it in the name. And they have just routed those uh, grasses there. And they're actually getting a bit of a flank right now on the uh, the Prussians. we got their visual legion out here. They're doing their bit. Over here, though, this is not looking good for this Russian South Army. This is not good at all. Lots of routing troops here. I mean, this is the weakest of the three, like the four armies, uh, and it kind of got left out on its own. It's not got any French units in it. It's got a lot of like grenadiers, like these are Neapolitans, these are like other Italians. We've got lots of German infantry here. They've got a lot of grenadiers still alive. Marines, the Royal Guard, Naples. Yeah, no like sort of French units. So they have got pretty good allied troops. I feel like they just stayed right next to their big brother, like. Uh, army center, like, Russia center, they would be fine. They started to get a little bit sidetracked, and they're getting, like, pinned back by Austria. Austria's doing a pretty good job in pinning these guys back. Austria still has plenty of cap as well. Ogru here is not looking too great. I mean, it's just, like, a matter of time until this army gets destroyed, because they have the cav, they have the line infantry. All they, li all they have to do with the line infantry is just engage them, and the cav just har hammer and anvils, and they are out of this game, really. There's Neapolitans, I guess, are going to maybe guard the rear. But still, and look at this, though. While uh, like Austria's been over there, France has been able to get a little flank going on. He's got these dragoons. He's gonna be able to get in behind now. Maybe go for some rear charges. We're seeing also some uh, Italian line infantry. They're gonna push up. I think they're gonna go and try and silence his gun. Can they get a volley off? This is like a guard gun, like artillery um, for us uh, for Prussia. Sorry. But yeah, they are actually gonna like, kind of stopped. I think by looks like more guards maybe of the, uh, the Prussians. There's certainly some good, there's some decent Prussian infantry. Yeah, they're just getting overwhelmed now, these poor Italian infantry. Got sent to die, really. Got more guns being set up here, though. 12 pounder here. This should do pretty well. It's like a German artillery. This is being defended by conscripts of the guard. But yeah, Austria's kind of getting torn about a little bit. And we've actually had some uh, line infantry, Vista Legion going in. They have broken land bear here. Dragoons going into the back lines. And, uh, is that general here? No, it's a, that is a line infantry. I thought it was a general for some reason, but it's just the cavalry of the Dragoons here. And they are routing this entire Prussian left flank right now. And this one's probably going to go as well. And Prussia right now, I mean, still bringing up more troops, but he's in a little bit of danger. He's in a little bit of danger. Breaking that one. Can they go on and get another one, the Dragoons? Quite possibly no. This one's falling square. Stop when you realize you're picking up more than you can chew, uh, Dragoons. That is enough. Okay, get out of there. You've done your bit. Now let the Vista Legion go in. They can just carry on. Carry on the charge. Wherever they are. They're in there somewhere. And you can see now Italians rushing forward and more Vista Legion. Fighting hand-to-hand -hand combat. What is this village for? It's just Houston. They're fighting pretty hard over this, this tiny little village. It's not even where Colm is. Yeah, here we go. Big charge here by the French. 
you have got uh, Vista Legion being broken already. They've got a pretty nasty volley hit on them. But yeah, massive charge here by the uh, by the French going in. And they're pretty, staying pretty far back on this side, which is pretty smart, I think. That's, they've done a really good job on this flank. They're going to take this gun. But this is what they're after. They're after this gun. But yeah, I mean, I mean, with this army about to be destroyed, as you can see here, the army, army south, Russia south here getting destroyed. We're about to see a charge here by some... Uh, Grenadiers, they're gonna go in. So it looks like some Jaegers. Uh, <laughs> break them, yeah. It's a good chart, a uh, good volley, but yeah, look at this. This reminds me of uh, that, like square there. Reminds me quite often uh, if you've seen the Waterloo uh, film and like the guard form square, which is just, by the way, is not historically accurate. Yeah, that kind of reminded me of it there. Those like guards of Naples. Oh my God, these guys getting violated. Yeah, the, like, uh, Naples is like square there. It just like reminded me of that quite a lot. That was quite nice. But yeah, Austria now rushing stuff back over. Seeing that Prussia is getting just obliterated on this flank. But let's just have a quick look, see how it's going on every other flank. France has pushed forward massively and kind of has to with the uh, lack of artillery. He is forcing back the Russians. The Russians look like they're retreating to uh, maybe this little village over here. I'm not entirely sure. And then Ney, on Ney's flank, around the village of Kulm. Let's have a look and see how that is going. Looks like it's going on. We've got a Russian cavern behind here, but he seems like he's holding his line. Doing quite a good job, forcing back the Russians. He has the cavalry superiority, as we are aware. We watched the cavalry fight take place. And it seems like that will be... Like the, uh, either the Russians will have to push forward or they'll have to play super defensive. I feel like the Russians have to take this uh, village. But, um... But I personally think, like, they, they've got the, they've got time. I mean, and Prussia's not out of this game over here. Prussia's forces should return. Austria's looking really healthy. Um, so they may be able to hold on. Like, Murad's done a very good job here with his uh, with his troops. But can he take a second wave with the Austrians? Like, the Austrians will come flying on in into this north of this village, you imagine. And they still have Cav, which uh, Murad's kind of short of. But yeah, we will see how they do how they do indeed but yeah they are kind of resetting up and it seems like we're just seeing the well most of <laughs> most of these like russian troops these uh french troops here these german troops have returned but they're not the same the marines of the guard are just going to get themselves into a building and they're just going to make themselves hard to break and get out of there but in fairness is dragging austrian troops away from the fight from the main fight and that's the main thing he's dragging what like five russian uh, regiments here away come and deal with this small, pitiful, like, force of, uh, French here, which is being still led by, uh, Oguru. I would honestly get him and, like, the Marines into that building, and I would make a stand. Maybe get the rest of the, uh, units around the building. Just make it hard to, like, break down. That's the best he can do, probably. But yeah, I don't even know. Well, these are, these are grenadiers. If they return, you want to get them in as well, but... Who knows? Who knows? But it seems as though, like, it seems like the only action really going on right now is over here. We have actually got a bit of a... a we had a bit of a cavalry battle. Lancers here getting routed. Some Polish Lancers routed by others and some Russian cav. It seems like, yeah, this side is where all the action is starting to take place now. Russia laying off a few volleys. Russia advances, the house is going off all around the place. You can see you've got the Grenadiers, the line here are treating. These beautiful looking boys, they are beautiful. One of my favorite looking units, Grenadiers, the line. We've got Trilliers here, these guys. Oh, I mean, this is just an elite force over here. I don't even think if the Russians are going to break through. Like, there's just so many Trillier units here. We've got four different ones. And then they've got Grenadiers the line, which are pretty good in, like, in a, like, in a firefight. Also, they can just charge anything that they want to. I mean, the, where they got to be hitting them right now, the Russians, is over here. This is where all the Allied troops are. These are, like, we've got Italians here. We've got, like, troops from Vedenberg. Got, uh, like, a Vedenberg gun here. Yeah, this, this is, like, all where they're all... They've got a few line infantry out here. This is where they should be hitting them. The Russians, not up here in the forest. Like, this is all the elites. 
And it seems like France is like so comfortable. Like he's shifting more troops across. He's got some Italian troops, so he's gonna shift them across. Not a bad idea. And honestly, I'd shift them here because this is where like the Russians are probably gonna bring up more troops, if anything. But yeah, these troops here, he's going to the line. I haven't taken too many in the casualties. Still doing pretty well, still healthy numbers. Fight for your Emperor! Viva le Emperor! Anyway, we will go over to this flank over here and we will have a look and see what's going on. It looks like France and Russia over here really uh, dueling out for this, like, sort of this... I don't know. I feel like Russia's trying to get Brown to his ally, maybe, but that's not going to happen. These French cavalry here, I don't know why they don't just char uh, hit these Russians on the march. Like, I know some of them may form squares. A, it'll slow them down. The Russians don't allow the infantry to catch up, but also... I don't know if all these can form square. You can definitely catch a few of these out. See if the like see if the Russian player is paying attention. Like these lancers here, and these uh, dragoons could just annihilate some of these units here. But yeah, this Russian player is just not interested in fighting uh, France. He's like, nah, there's too much. I don't know how big his army is, but uh, usually Russian armies are pretty big. This is a very big French army. You see here, look at this, look at these like light infantry here just getting annihilated right now. They're like, hold on, man! The officer's like, come on, fight for your czar! Do not run! And then they run, just like that. And the gun, oh, this gun's gonna get taken out. It's just a one gun, I guess. It's not the end of the world, but still, every artillery counts. Yeah, these boys running off. It's not looking good over here. I mean, what they got here? Like, it's just basic line infantry. Yeah, basic line infantry poles. The rest of the army's carrying on this way. Doing a good job as the French in this side and like in the rear. Over on the front lines, I'm not so sure. But yeah, still like fighting going on here. But they have reignited on this front. Austria and Prussia have brought on their second assault. And they are getting straight into the action. France here with his Fusilier guards. With his allied Germans. They're holding the line. They're doing their bit. Consuls the guard here. They got plenty of uh, got plenty of decent troops here. And these conscripts that are conscripts, but they are of the guard. I believe they're pretty good. They got pistol legion, so these guys are hard to kill. Austria's got plenty of troops there to throw them. He's got plenty of line control of varying types from various different parts of his empire. I mean, he's got there's a few columns here along with uh, Prussia that could just flank around if they wanted to. I mean, there are still some Russian South troops here. We still got like Grenadiers of Poland and like some Grenadiers of Hesse. Why did they leave these guys here? It seems as though Russia South is uh, very much dead, though. It's all gone. It all broke. And it's all off the side. They didn't even decide to defend this village, which is a shame. So they are down a French army, basically, at this point. So, I mean, it is advantage allies. But the Russians don't look like they're doing so hot. It could be down to the Prussians and the Austrians here to carry the day. See, there's a uh, Austrian cab flanking around. I mean, there are some gendarme elites and some uh, dragoons here. These guys are going to be uh, pretty tough to kill. Some of these uh, gendarmes. I wonder whether France try another charge. I mean, out here he's looking really light though on troops. And we've got some visible legion here, but I feel like pressure could overwhelm this. These poles are hard to kill, but I don't know if they can take on this many uh, Prussians. We'll see. They're looking glorious though, is what they are. Love the Polish uniforms. They are probably my favorite looking ones. I love that yellow and blue look. Looks awesome. Beautiful, beautiful. What have they got here? Is this a bit, oh, this is like some Nassau, Nassau Jaegers. These guys are gonna fight for uh, Wellington in a few years' time. Never would they have thought that, would they? Never would have thought that. They'd be changing sides. Look at this, it's the lines of Prussians here. It's insane. 
really is. Huge mouth Russians. Uh, let's just check on like the French over here. They're actually shifting troops back across. We've got some uh, French and Italian troops coming across, calling troops to the line. Uh, they are going back this way. Seems as though the French are quite happy with dealing with the Russians. Or well, what's left of them anyway. I don't know what there is left of them. I'm not entirely sure I've seen their entire army, but it seems to be doing okay. Over here, it seems like France and Russia still in deadlock. No one's really made any gains or any losses. I mean, just men have been lost on both sides. You've got these grenadiers of Cheval here. It's nasty. <laughs> you do not want to get in the way with these bastards. These guys will cut you down. They've only lost one man. They are healthy. Um, but yeah, they are probably looking for options. I mean, I wouldn't want them in the uh, forest. Surely that slows down mobility. But uh, they are, I'm sure they'll get some kills. France on this side, though, is still in a bloody firefight here. There's two different... There's a 12-pound here. All right. It's like firing either side of this conscript with the guard. I can hear charging. Someone's making a charge. Oh, is it these, uh, oh, we got Austrian Cav all the way out here, and it's going to charge these Grenadiers. I, I mean, if he charges the Grenadiers of Hess, they cannot form square. And there you go. They have gone in. I imagine this Grenadier unit will be routed. Actually, the Austrians were routed. That, that is a surprise. The cavalry charge on an infantry unit that can't form square, and the infantry wins. I mean, they are Grenadiers in fairness, but still. I mean, they could flank around now. These Grenadiers here, they could flank around this Austrian formation. Get a good charge here. Maybe a good little play they could try. Look at the hordes, though, of Austrian and Prussians. There's a lot of them. Looks like we're about to see maybe a charge here by the Austrians. In come the, uh, yeah, in come the Grenadiers of Poland. They're coming into the backs of these, uh, these Grenzers here. Should be a battle they can win, I would have thought. And there you go, yeah, as well. Vista Legion here being battled. I thought these guys were pretty tough to kill, but you know what? They're doing okay. The Austrians are doing okay around them. Got Italians now going into counter charge. And already this village is seeing, seeing a lot of blood back. It's going to see even more. But conscripts of the Royal Guard going in. They are probably going to get broken, though. They have been broken. And we've got even more infantry going in. These uh, grenadiers may be caught out here. Look at that, they are kind of getting broken, yeah, the Hessian ones have been broken and the Polish ones, and that is in the entirety now of Russia South gone. And this charge by uh, France has kind of turned itself around. I mean, they've been broken in a few areas now, and Austria is kind of taking the top of this village. Seeing a charge on this side now as well by uh, got the gendarmes here, uh, elites, they are actually trying to break these land there, and uh, like these musketeers here as well. Breaking some. Trying to relieve some pressure of the French, I guess. But yeah, no one... I mean, the French do need these reserves. They're, like, making their way over here. We've got, like, five regiments. They may need a few more. May need a few more, but yeah. Hopefully not... They also can't, like, take too much because they have got to defeat a Russian army still over here. Russia has looked like he's just going to come straight for the prize. Eyes on the money. He's coming straight for Kulm. Um, seems like this Russian army here is just not making any progress. More Russian troops routing here. May, looks like he made some sort of a charge. Got routed. I don't know how much he's still got left. Maybe not enough, which is why his Russian allies coming around. Seems like Ney's like untouched here. Ney doesn't look like he's lost a single regiment. He's having a really good time just cutting down everything. He may want to think about sending troops down this road over to uh, this village. Though they don't have to hold this village. This is like an unnecessary village to hold. The village they've got to hold is cold. They have to hold cold. And, uh, I mean, they may just do that. It seems like, I think there's... This Austrian, building has fallen yeah, I was going to say, I think there's Austrian troops in this building. Yeah, there's Austrian troops in this building now. So, yeah, this village is slowly falling. I mean, yeah, France needs to retreat. He's banged up. There's no way he can get any, like, more gains from this. How did Oguru, by the way, get over here? You coward, fight and die with your men. But yeah, Murat has done a pretty good job. He's still got some decently, uh, like, sized 
regiments, but I mean, he needs to think about retreating. Maybe it's this river line here, meeting the rest of his like troops here, and I feel like that's where they should stop. Stop here at this river line, and then they can retreat to there. They could probably hold this line. They've got like this village to the left of them. They can use that if they need to. That is where I'd hold now. Though it does mean that like Austria or Prussia could just rush all the way to Kulm. I feel like this French army here can defend that. They've got so many units. So many trillions. Old boys, hold! If you can hear Germans in the back lines, don't worry about it. It's all part of the plan. They're actually our allies. They're definitely not Russians and Pru uh, Austrians and Prussians on their way. Oh, our allies. God, how is this going off everywhere? Probably one of the worst ways to die, just a howitzer shrapnel just like shredding you to pieces. I don't know, or it could be just like dying of your wounds. That's probably a pretty bad way to go. These uh, grenadiers still really healthy. I want to make sure that they survive. Yeah, you got more like you actually got the Allied line infantry coming up to support now. They really are like trying to get a little flank on here with Russia, who now looks like he's committing his full force. This looks like the entirety of Russia's line here. But yeah, who knows? It's hard to say. I don't think Russia can break this down. This is just like too elite. Russia's good in melee, but he's going to have to close that gap if he wants to try and do a melee charge. He certainly going to have a tough time as soon as he lost his cab. Also, he doesn't want to be doing this. He's got just like line infantry here running across the line of his like fire. They're just being shot by friend and foe. This doesn't do any good for your morale. Uh, so don't do this. Always, if you're moving troops like from one side of the flank to another, do it behind your lines. So, you know, your men don't get shot. Like this, this Russian unit here is probably thinking, who is killing us? Is it, like, our own Russians? What have we done to deserve this? It's not order. I not what order it is. 226, isn't it? It's like, no, no step back. Maybe that's what it is. Napoleonic order 226. No step back, only forward. Or get shot by your own men. There's a lot of cav and stuff over here still. This is like, this is the French army of uh, Eugene. It's basically been untouched. It looks like he's... Looks like that. You can see where the Russians are going. They're going way up here. And uh, Eugene, I think, seen the opportunity that he can come flying into the side of the Russian flank. And that's not a bad idea. He's also going to be needed because Austria and Prussia eventually will be rushing towards uh, Kulm if they could, don't deal with these, uh, these troops here. But yeah, there are now re uh, reinforcements arriving. They are Italians. Make of that what you will. They either fight really well, or they fight terribly. But yeah, you can see here the Poles and the Italians on the retreat. They need to get the heck out of Dodge. They need to run. Run for this river. We've got more and more actually retreating this way. We've got actual proper French line infantry now arriving. We've got some Poles. Yeah, there's a lot going back this direction. So uh, clearly France feel like this is the, uh, the main threat. And they are correct, I'd say. Austria and Prussia right now, the main threat. I'm not saying Russia isn't, it's just that they don't seem to be making any gains. Like, Ney is holding this uh, this French force. But we got Russian Cav in behind. This is huge. Why didn't they go for a charge? I don't know. That was a that was the chance. That was the time. They had a gun here they could have gone for as well. I'm going for this if I was Russia right now. But, there's, yeah, there's Russian Cav in behind. This needs to take out stuff right now. It needs to support its infantry. Where's the French Cav? There is literally French Cav here. These Dragoons should be engaging. Here we go. No, yep. Yeah, they, they, well, they weren't going to charge, but they are. They're going in. And they should route those Cossacks. Yeah, pretty easily. They are only like half. But I don't know what Russia f formation Russia's forming at. I guess he's having a turn because of these uh, Italian infantry coming across from Vedenberg. But it's not a fun fight here for Russia. He's not had a good time in this forest. Like I said, he kind of... I don't know if he purposely chose to attack it, or it was just out of sheer luck, but he hit the elites of the French army. But they are having a tough time now, and these, uh, these Ruskies wish they were probably back in Russia, safe and sound, but here they are dying in Germany.
I mean, right, not right now, France is pushing hard. I mean, these uh, line infantry could probably charge these Russians. There are actually more Russians out here. There's endless amounts of Russians. I take it back. Maybe they still got plenty. You need to be careful as well with their cavalry here. Ladu does not want to go and get unnecessary losses. It's a good cavalry unit. Just when you thought Russia was out of troops, there's even more appear here. So, Ney's got a tough fight still in his hand. He's got plenty more troops here. I don't know if these are looking like reinforcements from like this army. I'm not entirely sure, but we will find out. It looks like I can hear a charge. Russia is actually sending in infantry against this Italian infantry here. This is probably a fight Russia will win. Because he charged, and also they're just better in melee. I and mean, we're going to see the cavalry go into the back lines, and this is certainly change the fire around. Ledoux here will get some kills. This will uh, this will clear up this uh, this issue here. And that's a Russian line infantry that's broken. Any second now. Yep, there it goes. But how are we doing over here? It seems like France and Austria still dueling out. Austria actually looks like he's a uh, he's done. An, he's like retreating now. And we've actually got French. Occupy this building here. Oguru is actually going in. Good man. And there's some Polish grenadiers. I mean, fair enough. Occupy the building. Slow them down. And that's all this French army over here has to really do now. It's just slow them down because once these French force over here defeat the Russians, which I think they're going to. That's my prediction. I'm not, I don't know what's going to happen. I'm spoiling. That's my prediction. Because Russia just looks like he's... They're not cut out for fighting this French army. I mean, they might be now. But they have don't have the cav. I don't know what they have for artillery. But the infantry over here is just super strong for the French. Like, these these trilliers and stuff like that are pretty damn nasty. They are taking losses, though. They're still not masses. Though it does seem like Russia has endless men. Which is also useful. So who knows? Maybe France has just got to sit tight on both flanks and just hold. And just see if they can just... Wear down the front, like the allies. Who knows? Who knows? Isles. The thing is, also, I don't know, like, what of this Russian army is like what initially was here, and what of this Russian army is like just being sent from uh, like the army that's retreated, like all this battle. So we got some dragoons here alive. That's good. We at least got some like actually decent cav alive. But they got to deal with cuirassiers, they've got to deal with like more dragoons, more lancers. Yeah, they got some good cav over here to deal with, have the, uh, have the Russians. So they got a tough fight ahead of them. But as you can see, so do the Prussians. They're actually getting flanked right now. These reserves have come at the right time for the French. Is Nassau Jaeger still alive, harassing people where they can. Doing their little bit here and there. So got some dragoons. Are they just milking kills? They are. What cheeky boys. I mean, I guess make sure they're unit routes, but it, that's that's probably gone anyway. They probably could do with getting a uh, Austrian or Prus uh, Prussian kill on their like, on the general. Kill one of them. They're in business. No generals have fallen yet, I don't think. Here you go, Russia's actually uh, pushing forward. France is going to give him the ground. I mean, France has sent a ridiculous amount of troops over to that other side now, this French army. I believe it sent either troops to Ney or it sent troops to the, uh, like, to the other board, like, the other front over there. So this isn't a full army for the French here. This is just a portion, I think. What we got over here? Some pretty nice musketeers coming down this road. Hopefully they can do some damage. Yeah, Russia on the advance. That's always good. But 
They're not so much here. They're quite happy just to sit here and uh, just wait because I just shell these chili ears probably. I've gone on about them so much, but they are a beautiful looking unit. Beautiful looking unit. And they still got plenty of assets out here. I feel like the French are perfectly set for this. They've got the cav. The cav to win this fight. It seems like both sides uh, aren't really engaged at all. It seems like France is going to re reignite the uh, the conflict. She's coming back for this town by the looks of it. Austria and Prussia. I don't know if this is their full armies, but they look a little thin on the ground. They were looking much stronger earlier. Probably when the French had more men. Uh, had less men, sorry. They have now got more. Careful, you don't want to shoot your own men, especially these Vistal Legion. They're very handy. In they go. They're going to move up, do their bit. Let's carry here. I mean, what, what's a harass one of these units? Gonna go in for a unit here. This is like to land there by the looks of it. Next one square, they can. And yeah, they're just gonna scare off the dragoons. It's gonna slow them down. Enough to just get shot. Their morale's dropping. I mean, now the dragoons should go back in. They should just loiter around there. I mean, at the same time, they want to probably keep these dragoons alive. It's the only bit of cav over here by the looks of it. Cav has been spent on both sides. Wisely? I don't know. Not sure about that one. Austria looks like he's sending forward infantry again, though. He's just sending forward a few infantry to slow them down. I don't know. He could retreat these guys. I don't think he needs to do this. But Russia has once again re-engaged on this flank. Not, nothing too exciting. It looks like we, oh my gosh, that was a shell low and a half. Direct hit on those Italians. Look like some Vettelberg infantry. These guys look really cool. I do like the look of their uniform. I mean, this whole period has got some beautiful looking uniforms. If I was France, I'd probably try... I know they don't know where the Russians are, but you've got to try and swing around, try and squish this, uh, this Russian formation. Perhaps. Still plenty of Russian cav out here. Well, I say plenty. It's one unit. And it is Dragoons. I don't know if it's enough to stop those cuirassiers. That's what I'm still worried about for the uh, allies. So the cuirassiers, they're going to do a lot of damage. I'm kind of having to route for the... A uh, uh, route? Uh, route for the... Um, for the allies now. For like, the coalition forces. For history's sake and also because they are the probably the underdogs. I'd say they are the underdogs at this point. And I feel like I've always got a root for the underdogs. Why did Austria just send forward this unit here? To die. Why did Austria send forward any units? They should have brought them all back. It had time. I had no need to do this. These boys didn't need to die. Yet they are going to die. Same on this side. These uh, Austrians here just getting focused down. And there's no need. Their white uniforms being covered in blood. Not these ones, though. These are brown. This hides the blood a little bit more. It's looking beautiful. Good, good, gotta love a line battle. Look at this, it's a long Polish line now. These guys are basically untouched. And they've traveled across so much of the battlefield. But here they go. They're gonna try and retake this village out of the French. The offensive is on here. There's still a lot of Austrians. Like I said, I don't know why they sacrificed that infantry unit. Is there a charge? I can hear, like, combat. I can't see any. Don't know. It's a strange one. Oh, this is not good. Actually, 
Overlap is not too bad. It nearly looks pretty really bad, but it's not that bad. But yeah, I think we flanked here with these Austrians. Hit hard. They're gonna go for a charge by the looks of it. They're getting very, very close. They've gotta be going for a charge. Either that or Austria's throwing away its men, I don't know. Brutal volley there onto the Austrian line. That is probably going to break that very, very quickly. That is just got absolutely violated. I have. I wonder whether whoever's playing as Austria dropped because they were doing so well to start with. And this doesn't seem like the same sort of play and the same sort of moves. I may be wrong. Maybe they, they didn't drop, but I feel like they are. Just how they're set up. They're not set up in proper lines, and they're getting really close. I feel like this vault they've just gone in for a charge by now. Our men are right on time. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Oh, they just did very well earlier. Yeah, this has got to be AI. Like, they're overlapping and things like this. It's very strange. I don't know. It's being absolutely pummeled by these Italian infantry and the competition of the guy. Yeah, look at that. Broken. This is a sad way out for Austria to go, but he's getting just obliterated right now. That is sad, sad, sad. But anyway, the main Russian and French lines over here have engaged. Finally, this Russian player has gone, you know what, it's time to go in. They brought a lot of light infantry. A lot of light infantry. I wonder what's, whether that's why they didn't want to engage. I don't know. Over here, the rush is still looking really strong. I, and I would say, the France needs to like, squish this uh, flank. There's just, the flank's still here. I don't know what's happened. It's still there, there though. They need to just hit the flank with the cavalry or get in behind. Like, their cav is like all the Russian cav now. Surely is gone. I send this little little like goon unit. Get in behind. See if you can get this general. See if you can route stuff. Try and like move this battle along on a little bit. See that's what the uh, French cav here is doing. It's flanking around behind, forcing Russians to look the other way. But uh, yeah, it's a it's brutal on both sides right now. The final Russian dragoon here, ready to die for its czar to protect its general and whatever else. I don't think we've got any other assets. Really. We've got no guns or anything like that. And there you go. Look at this massive Prus uh, Austrian route. Prussians will probably soon follow. France will just go in now. Just swing in with the infantry. Move the entire line for, uh, forward and just win the day. They broke some uh, Jaegers over here, which I guess is something. It's one thing, but it's not much. The general's trying to survive. The Western general's like, please get me out of here. And here we go, we've got these uh, French Dragoons going in, and they are going up to the Prussian General. And the Austrian one's broken as well. And causing all sorts of chaos, they're going to break everyone in there. General, general being killed, that's two Generals killed in a matter of seconds. Both Austrian and Prussian Generals just killed just like that. Well done little Dragoon unit here. You've done your Emperor proud. And they've just routed everything. And what, a couple of, couple of Prussian units? You could now send most of the French army back down this road and support the Russian fight. And that is basically, after this fight was brutal over here. It really was brutal. And I don't think the Prussian, I mean, maybe if the uh, Austrian player did drop, that's not his fault. It's just unfortunate. It just kind of looked like he did how his like army kind of just stopped. How it's set up. Um, but they just kind of ran out of momentum. Um, they really did. Um, and they're just lucky that the French sent forces over. Maybe that's kind of down to the pressure, this uh, Russian player here not putting the pressure on the French. If he actually engaged them, maybe he could have uh, stopped any reinforcements from coming over. But now, as you can see, the French, the French were down an army. Now, it's the Allies down an army. It's now a 3v2, really. Though, I mean, it seems like the Russians are doing a good amount of damage over here. 
Oh, they have broken a unit. These Lancers got broken. Well, they, they got broken by, I presume, by these uh, Dragoons here. But they are still really healthy. They're 47 men. They should return. I would have thought so, but I'm not sure. And we can see Russian Cav going in. They are going in against uh, some French lines over here. Not a bad charge. They've broken them. And now, as you can see, the French having to turn. They are kind of been caught out. I thought they were going to be able to deal with these, uh, these Russians, but... Clearly not. They're going to need the French cab. They've got some squares set up in the rear. Not a bad strategy, but I mean, you could probably run the gauntlet and get straight to the back lines of these, uh, these Russians if you needed to. Our men are running, sir. But yes, look at this. More uh, French breaking. These are all the poles being broken. And they're actually, yeah, a lot of French breaking here. This is not a good sign. How is Ney doing? Ney still holding. He has actually got some routing troops here, though. Italian troops breaking. Grenadiers, the line breaking. That's not so good. A beautiful looking boys. They broke. They're going to have to shift the troops over. But it looks, it looks like Trillier is going over. Maybe some Vedenberg line. I'm not entirely sure. But it looks like they're moving over. Eugene's here. And he's like, oh boy. It's it. It's looking pretty spicy down there. The Russians are coming. And look at that. They really are. The French having to throw in infantry. They're going in against the oh, Russians here. Running. They are breaking across the front. They really need now, they really need this French army, and it is moving quickly. As you can see, this is definitely like the French reinforcements. This is Eugene's forces here that were supporting the Aust against Austria. They are now rushing back to support their own corps. Because uh, they are getting pounded by a Russian cab. They're probably going to route all these guys. They cannot form a square, any of these guys. Our men are running. Yeah, they are just in real trouble. What a massive break there. What a massive win there for Russia. And now Russia can swing in and flank uh, Ney if he has to. But Ney, Ney's in a sticky position himself now. He was in a solid position defending this river line. And then this Russian army's arrived and it's just caused all sorts of havoc and all sorts of problems. I mean, luckily now they're just shooting their own infantry, but... They don't need to... I mean, I guess they're just trying to like, go... We basically took no casualties in this. We need to take some casualties. Shoot some of our own men. We need to report some casualties. Shoot someone. But yeah, these are all gone. These, oh, my gosh. I mean, some of these may return, these uh, French line infantry, but... Oh, boy. It's not looking good. And you can see here now Russia's making a pretty con concentrated assault on this, uh, on this building here. And the Russians are, like, deep into coal. They are, like, actually in the city of Cole. Um, this is, like, a different village out here where Ney's kind of defending. So, yeah, Russia is actually holds the point. Like, France is going to come up with forces. And a lot of them. And he needs to push them straight back out of this village. Of this town. And that, that French cab is still alive. We also will just remember that. This French cab is still alive. And it's very, very, vo like... Nasty, nasty cav. This so building has fallen to the there enemy. Go. So the, fr uh, the Russians are entrenching themselves now in buildings, which is probably a smart idea if they're going to hold this uh, hold this town. They need to get in this other farmhouse, and then they are good to go. They're good to repel the, like the next French force, which to be fair is not made of anything more that much impressive. I mean, these guys can form square though. Well, most of them can. Yeah, literally bar one unit, they can all form square. These Fuselier Guard can form square. Yeah, this is a legion. Yeah, most of this can form square this as well. This building has that fallen to the enemy. Another building, that's the farmhouse that's just fallen to the, to the Russians. They're now entrenching that. And now it's going to be a bit of a, a brutal fight now for the French to try and take back this village. And you can see, look at this. Russia's now, Russia's now marching down his, uh, his musketeers. And he is probably going to try and reinforce Colm, I imagine. Either that or he's going to try and turn the flank of Ney. Like I said, though, Ney's in a sticky position where he goes. He's actually pushing forward massively. I think these uh, Russians were taking from somewhere else. Yeah, this but is actually... Are fatigued, this sir, this force here, I'm pretty sure, was concentrated right in front of uh, like this farmhouse. So I don't know. They look like they either are going to go towards the village. Or I don't know where they're going. But Russia's on the retreat on this side. If I was Ney as well, I would uh, probably retreat... I'd be like, right, that's fine, and I will will help. I'll help encircle this Russian force here, and then the uh, French can just unite as one army, and they could probably just finish off the Russians. 
But it seems like Ney is going to occupy himself by pushing back the French, uh, like the Russian forces as much as possible. But here come the French and Polish columns. They're making moves. There you go, the Russians open up. They start their volleys. France must reply as soon as possible. It's always nice just to watch a little line battle, but I hope you guys are enjoying the vid. It's certainly been a fun one. It's been a very close one as well, to be honest. I've been going back and forth, back and forth, who actually is probably in control of, uh, like, different villages, who is in control of the battlefield. Lots of outmaneuvering going on. Some really good plays by the players here today. So I hope you guys have enjoyed it. And there is, it's still not over. Russia can still turn this around. I say turn it around. I feel like France kind of still holds some sort of dominance. Like Nade, for instance, has got a very healthy army out here. Lots of regiments. Look at this, trying to shell this cavalry out here. I mean, France could uh, kind of outflank this position if it wanted to just go through this village. I know there's cavalry here, but you could go through this village and then just try and take this farmhouse. That'd be possibly what I do. This is just like light infantry. I don't think it fights well in melee. Certainly not maybe against line infantry, but we'll see. I think maybe they're just waiting for the rest of their army. Waiting for these other troops to arrive, which is not a bad idea. They don't want to take them on piece by piece. They want every last regiment. How small or how big it is. Yep, seems like this is where it is. I mean, actually, oh, look at this. French cab getting focused down. They, they need to get these. Come on, boys. Get out of combo. Get out of, like, get out of range. Retreat rather than go, like, sideways. It's elite cab. Well, one of them's very elite. Curacia unit here. If you want to keep that alive. Seems like Ney is, uh, Ney is going to retreat, which is probably the smart move. Like, he wants to retreat because, like, well, he could, sur he has the potential that he could just surround, like, Russia. He could make this Russian force here just, like, in a irreparable position. Like, if they just, uh, all they need to do is surround them. And this Russian force here that has daringly taken cold is in real, real trouble. I can hear combat, but I can't see it. It's not these French, ca uh, this Russian cab pushing forward. It Russian cavalry is pushing forward, but I don't think it's uh, going into combat. And look at this under heavy fire now. I mean, so many French regiments firing on it. And yet, yeah, that might break before it even gets into combat. I imagine it's pretty tired. And smart move by the Russians, retreating their final unit of cav, getting it out of there. I mean, now, now the French should be pushing hard. I think they should be pushing hard on the center. I don't know how much is here, but maybe they're just gonna wait on Ney. Wait on the man that is Ney. So many, this is healthy units. The healthy elite units. Got Eugene here, he's just chilling. Artillery of Bedenberg here doing his bit. Oh, I mean, that's just gonna. That's just stuck in the forest forever now. That should not move. Just charge this building, Poland, or like Poles. Charge the building. Take it. The 
They're all in there just like taking cover, firing, defying these poles. Just charge them. You take so much more casualties than they are taking. Oh, cavalry breaking. What are the charge? What are the Drake do? What is it? Dragoons breaking? Yeah, that is not good. They may return to 39 men, but yeah, the Russians out here are engaging. As you can see, there are French troops here. We've got Italians, we've got the uh, guard units, we've got Visual Legion, Conflict of Guard. They are all flanking around now and they're going to engage this Russian force. And the Russians are going to, in a moment, have no choice but to just hold their line and then the French keep them slamming on in with their cavalry. I can hear it moving. It's going to get getting the call to rally. French taking a bit of a pounding. And here we go. Ney has arrived to sort of encircle what remains of the Russians here. Look at this. Russian cab to sin right next generals. to the general. Oh, a Russian general has got himself killed on stakes as well. Oh no, not the way you want to say your general go out, but uh, that is certainly going to help the French cause now. No general with this Russian army. It's going to do a lot of damage to morale. We've got Russians here that have been caught out on the march by Ney's army and they're having to now fight here. Looks like some serfs by the looks of it and then some main like Russian musketeers. To be fair, I mean, it truly is. I mean, the morale's not looking great. Has Vedenberg troops been broken? I mean, if I was this French unit, maybe just charge the uh, the cav. Maybe a not a bad idea. They, uh, I don't know if they broke those poles. But over here, as you can see, lots and lots of uh, Russians breaking now. We've got Visceral Legion just charging and breaking all of these Russians. So really well done there. Now these uh, French can flank around and they can start to encircle what Russians are in here. I don't know how many there are, but there's still Russians all the way back here making their way up. We've got... This is, is this the howitzer? I think it is. Yeah, this is the howitzer. It's been shelling the French all day. The dude's still out there, by the way. The Grenadier Chevelle. They want to probably come in. Do some work. And there you go. They did, in fact, charge. There you go. The French did charge that uh, Dragoon unit. They weren't paying attention, and they broke it. Well done. That's all they had to do. Now they can form the line again, and they can just start firing, fighting by normal. I don't know why this French army over here, by the way, is not pushed in. Like, they should just be pushing in. Tightening this circle. And you can see you've got the uh, the French coming around here. I mean, if Russia can hold this village, then I guess they win. I guess they win. Needs a big push now by France. France has no time to slow down. It's been shelling this goddamn village to pieces. Poor inhabitants of Culm, they're not going to have a fun time here. The Russians and the air, everyone else is probably just thinking, where are our reinforcements? Where are our hordes of reinforcements coming from? And they're certainly not on their way yet. A volley from the, uh, from the poles, please? Go on. Give us a volley. Send these Russians back to the abyss once they came from. Okay, it wasn't the one I was hoping would volley, but there was a volley. I mean, now they can flank these uh, like Russian units here. Seems like a, there seems like a lot more in this like circle than I remember. I thought it was just a few units of like light infantry. No, nope, there's more than I thought. Muraz out here doing his little bit. Where is Ney? I just thought. Did Ney die? I don't think so. Got Italian sappers in this building. They're just shelling them to pieces. Poor guys. Got the Russians trying to get more and more troops into the village. I'm not entirely sure how many Russians are still left. Haven't quite been able to gauge the size of their army the entire game. They do just keep appearing out of the woodwork. Like little roaches like they are. Running, 
Breaking French though, this is good here, the Russians making a few charges. I actually could break a couple of units here, broken another Polish unit. Come on Russia, big turnaround here, this is going to be huge, they're going into another one here. This Polish unit's also look pretty weak. The morale, we're going to see a charge here now by uh, the Poles as well, they're going to go in. Yeah, they're just not, the Russians are uh, doing a good job here. And here we go, we're going to see French units going flying on in. These guys are going to get a pretty decent volley off from them before, maybe? I don't know. Our men are running, sir. Seems like uh, France and Russia are just going to battle it out. They're going to just go for bayonet charges. They think it's the best way to break through. It may actually be. I mean, Ney has now arrived. Fully, well and truly has arrived. They just need to, like, crush these units quickly. And then they can sort of, I mean, they, I guess they hold calm again, okay? You can say this church, maybe if they take this building back, then that is officially what they hold to hold calm. We see a general fly in. This is going to be a risk. If he dies, in the, I don't know what his army's got left, but if he dies, that could be it for his army. His morale will shatter. And it looks like they've just about beaten back all these Russians. It was a costly one. This fight's still going on. And now storming the building here. Looks like they're sending in some, uh, some basic infantry, some line infantry here. I'd say they basically hold. We've taken the building, yeah, they're retaking the comb here. They've taken that one easily enough. This one, not so much. Yeah, they're still fighting in the street, so they were. And they have actually taken it. And there you go. Colm has been retaken for the French. And now there's a small Russian force over here. And now we're going to see like these dragoons rush down the hill. They're going to assault these, uh, assault these Russians. Get some payback for all the pain that they did to the French. A really, really good fight. It's been a tough one. For the, uh, for the French, I won't lie. This has not been the easiest of fights. Like, I was thinking with some of their infantry, I was like, oh my gosh, they got a tough time today with the coalition forces. That is that ge that's that Russian general that went flying on in there. There's no generals now left. Um, I think these might be the last few like, Russian units here. But we are going to fast forward a little bit just as, like, France mops up these... Uh, these last few Russian units here, they're also dealing with a small unit over here. But yeah, it was a tough to fight. I mean, they've, like, there's so many bodies in this uh, village over here. Over on that far side, there is thousands of bodies. But yeah, there is, it's been a brutal, brutal fight. I mean, Russia uh, did a really good job taking Kulm. I mean, Austria did a good job as well, taking out that uh, that uh, French army from the very start. We've got Murar actually going in here. He's going for a charge. What a brave, brave man. And then uh, you've got... Prussia holding on did very well, uh, supporting in that uh, Austrian push, helping to push back the French. Um, but yeah, it's been a tough fight entirely. But the French just about won, and they're going to change history. They're actually going to win the Battle of Kulm, and they are going to go on and, uh, well, I guess go to Leipzig, and maybe this will change by like, defeating this uh, this huge force here. You like you'd imagine the force, the Allied forces of Leipzig, would be smaller, um, and also. Uh, like the French forces would be larger and you'd uh, expect maybe a different uh, result at Leipzig who knows but there you go it's a draw apparently well I would say that is a victory for the French because I believe that the uh, objective was to take Kulm uh, for the Allies they nearly nearly did it I thought they were going to do it um, but yeah this was sent in by uh, Johnny Le Buffoon who's playing as the Austrians in this one are usually playing as the Frenchies but it's from a uh, French perspective I'm not quite sure whose perspective it's from um, but I think it's from one of the uh, like the Russian center perspectives. I think it's from like Don's or Angry Peasants. I'm not entirely sure. Um, but yeah, well done to uh, all of the players that took part in this one. It was a really, really uh, tough fight for um, just about everyone. Everyone had their like challenges throughout this one. But yeah, Johnny Little Buffoon, uh, Nash, uh, Seth, and Sniper uh, Smith UK all did a really good job as the allies. I don't know if Johnny dropped, um, but like his, I think he might have, which is why it's from a different perspective. Because his Austrian army just all of a sudden just stops moving and just stops like operating the same way it was like earlier, doing as it was doing so well. Um, but yeah, well done to Angry Peasant, to Don, to Clarky Boy, and to Richard Lionheart. They have changed history and they are going to uh, go on and uh, do great things maybe at Leipzig, who knows. Um, but yeah, I mean, Angry Peasant getting over 2,500 kills, I think he might have been playing his Ney. He did a really good job. Um, and he took, like, very few losses. Or maybe it was Don. Don may have been put. I don't know. Who knows? Um, but, yeah, we'll quickly have a look at some of the unit stats. Um, this is, like, from, like, whoever was playing as Eugene, which was 
could have been any of these Russian centers. To be honest, whoever's playing Eugene, it's from their perspective. But uh, they got some pretty decent kills um, with his infantry, but nothing too insane. Um, but there you go, guys. That is the Battle of Kulm. I hope you did enjoy. Do remember to leave a like, subscribe if you're around here, and a comment to show your support. And I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.